When you're creating subdivision surface models, sometimes the topology is just not going to look right. Even if you're using all quads, it just doesn't do what you want it to do. And so you're going to have to figure out solutions to these problems. Now, this is what we're going to do in this one, play around on this shape here. It's a great little practice project, but if you don't have an idea of how I made this, we'll start with that first. Uh, let's just create a cube, and we'll just go ahead and extrude out this way, extrude out this way, and uh, we'll go ahead and extrude out this way. All right, and just because we want to keep this simple, I'm going to delete the back faces, so I'm not going to worry about all of them. Delete those, all right, and um, so pretty much set up like so. Uh, probably the bottoms too. All right, now, so when you uh, create this shape, duplicate it and put it out here. So Shift D, press Y, and we'll start working on this thing. Now, you're probably tempted to just start adding loop cuts. Kind of hold that center corner there. Add a number of loop cuts for this particular shape to kind of hold it all in place. We'll go through it real quick. We're done. All right. So we hit control two, we subdivide it. <laughs> you can see got a little bit of an issue here. Doesn't happen. Press A and merge by distance. And you can see I had a couple that split for some reason, but uh, whatever the case, I'm gonna add a couple more cuts up here. Back to object mode. Okay. And one more here. I think that's it for now. Okay. And so if we turn subdivision off in edit mode and we turn off optimal display. To wireframes, right click, shade it smooth, and this is something you might do, right? And I've shown this on this channel actually. And a lot of times, uh, I go with this, believe it or not. I don't know, it's not necessarily a great topo, but it looks weird in this corner, right? Like it just doesn't look right. And so, uh, what's at the very center of this is what's called an e pole. And so, the e pole, of course, is going to be a vertex with five or more edges coming out of it. And um, this one happens to be right here and these things tend to stretch so if you're only subdividing you know one time it looks really horrible if you subdivide two or three or four so control one through five you can increase the resolution and you'll see it starts to look better and better but it's still it's just a little odd it doesn't quite look right and you can see it actually pulls up a little bit and it does some odd stuff so uh, it's all quads but not the greatest topo so what can we do with this to make this look better well, there's any number of solutions you can come up with. And when you're working on any project, you'll run into issues like this. Whenever you get hung up on something, uh, it's better to kind of explore the shape and see what the best possible result is that you can get. Because you could spend a lot of time on Google trying to find a similar uh, topology and trying to figure out exactly how to do it. Um, you'll end up probably on a Discord or Reddit or something asking for solutions. But um, with a little bit of kind of basic subdivision knowledge you know you can run around this thing and try to start figuring out what would work best in your uh, situation or case and in this case right here a lot of times i just kind of uh, increase the resolution in this area by pulling the uh, edge loops in further right yeah, this might be something you want to try may not give you the exact results you want but something like that you can condense the area right when it starts doing that number um, and if we take a look at it without the wireframes, you know, you might be able to use that. might be able to pass with it. Might add additional holding edges here to kind of keep that from stretching upwards. Right? And, and on top of that, you might just add additional loop cuts in here to keep that stretch. Um, keep it from stretching even further. So that's a possibility. Although it's starting to get pretty dense now, right? And so it might not work out for you even if you did all that. Plus it still has this weird kind of thing going on here. Or these edge flows kind of want to like cross over each other it might not be what you want so what else can you do with this shape right well there's a couple things you can use n-gons and triangles when you are doing subdivision surface modeling they work really good in what you would call a saddle and this thing kind of has like it's kind of like a saddle anyways of sorts but um, if i dissolve that edge and i dissolve that edge it creates two um, six-sided uh, and guns basically so when it subdivides it does this number and what's done is it's push it's kind of hard to see it what it does is it pushes that e pole in the middle it kind of splits it in two and pushes them out to the side might be useful and so um, you know but we have all this kind of stuff going on up here and that doesn't look right so what's causing that well 
That's just the other side of this, right? But we can collapse this down by merging, right? And then once we've merged that, these edges here are redundant. We can get rid of them. That's a reduction method. And matter of fact, if I look here, this is a, um, a vertex, right? On the back side of a triangle. It's a quad, all right? And it does actually uh, subdivide. So do that. And you can see we get a different result out of it now. If I can stop spinning it out of control. Um, but this might not be something you want to do because maybe it still has a weird deformation to it. Uh, it might not be able to deform very well, perhaps, um, or UV map very well, perhaps. So you get an idea, though, that you can do things like this. In certain situations, you might want to do something like this. It's a possibility. I mean, you can still try playing around with other ideas, like maybe selecting this edge all the way through in this area. All the way around you might try to do like a bevel here or a chamfer even and uh, you could try doing things like that perhaps just kind of re, re um, confirm that area i guess if you wanted to not that it really mattered that much in this case but you know you want to play around with the shape and just keep seeing what you can come up with this is about similar similar to what we had before but it's a little bit sharper perhaps maybe not that great so uh, what else can we try i don't know um, We'll find out let's let's do this um let's take this and this and this that. take all these edges here and let's do a chamfer okay and so when you have a hexagon right hexagons if you grab two verts and you press j you can cut it in half it turns into two quads all right so if we subdivide this now you can see we've got something completely different going on here it, it doesn't look too bad right now. Need to merge that again, apparently. Oh, we've messed up here. Let's try this one more time. This one needs to get merged first. There we go. Before we do all that chamfering, we'll do it again real quick. And go in here. Okay, so when it subdivides, you can see. It's doing something a little bit different here. Um, basically, it's got two E poles off to the side now. But the edge flows are doing like this number. So it's really not too bad. And it's a, it's a pretty decent shape, actually. So, you know, we can keep playing with this and exploring it. See what we could end up with here. Um, we could try adding some loop cuts, perhaps. See if that'll work out for you. Kind of tighten that area up a little bit. Okay, so if that's something you want, you could try that, possibly. Uh, you keep playing with the base shape, though, again. And explore that bevel a little bit further, perhaps. You'll notice if we um, do a Control b and Bevel and we mouse wheel up once we get this. Um, so that's kind of interesting, right? You can see when that subdivides, it's almost the same thing as we had before, but for whatever reason, the e-pole feels a lot tighter in this, in this setup. So, kind of an interesting thing, right? You could try that as well. Depends on what you're working on. It does create a little weird effect, though, slightly. It's a lot sharper. So, let's do this again. Little weird nuances happen when you're doing certain things like beveling and whatnot. So if I bevel again, and uh, we use, you can see I'm using shape of one, by the way, not 0.5, but you could use 0.5. But let's try doing it three times. You can see it creates a smaller section here. Join that now. Subdivide it, shade it smooth. And this is actually the one I like the most. It does tend to pull up and tends to pull down a little bit because it's still... Those e poles are just a lot tighter in this area now. But, you know, if you add a loop cut in here, oh, excuse me, I add a loop cut, um, you fill in these areas a little bit. So you kind of up the resolution of the whole model. Turn it back on. Okay. And you'll see, it doesn't look too, too bad. It still pulls a little. I'm not a big fan of that. 
you could try rotating this edge. You can rotate by right clicking, rotate clockwise. It'll give you a different result too. Just by doing one little adjustment like that. Right? So changing the direction of the flow would be quite important. Overall, you know, play around with the shape, see what you can end up with, and how you can twist and modify it and you know, do other little things like say right here we want to do a a three to one, so we do a cut. And we dissolve these two edges. X. Something like an inset of sorts. And so you could try things like that as well, too. Those little edits and modifications. You can collapse edges to create quad triangles or three to one, which is basically a half an inset. Is what it is. It'll up-res it in that area, perhaps. see what else yeah so you know play around with the shapes and see what you can get going because this may or may not work for you because that's kind of a weird topo or a weird flow there perhaps right so it might not be that useful but if you wanted some really super small detail in here somehow did something like that then i guess i guess you could yeah so have fun with this shape guys play around with it keep exploring it if you can come up with nicer, nicer results on it, perhaps. Is there any one like best solution for it? I don't I don't really know. I don't know if there's a best solution. But if you do know, leave a comment. Tell me what you think the best one is. Let's do shape point five here. Change that up. You see that created the uh the e pole there. So this face as well. It's a hexagon. You can poke it. That creates the e-pole, right? And so you can also grab these edges, dissolve them. It's actually an in-pole now. Okay, so that's a single vert with three edges coming out of it. Usually this is on the outsides of a shape like a cube, but um, or it's like an inset or extrude. Uh, but in this case, it kind of works here pretty well. So we'll see. It's actually one of the better solutions to this problem here so once you've done that of course you can add your loop cuts in i'll tighten the corner up just a little bit it tends to work out fairly well except it does want to stretch up and down quite a bit as well worst case scenario i might have got the triangulation here wrong so i could have Dissolve that, poke it again, and then maybe try doing this way. Is that what we had before? I don't know. What did we have before? Yeah, so that's the that's a different one. Right? And so maybe that one looks better. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? I think just cutting it in half works best. And then maybe an additional edge here just to kind of tighten up the resolution these areas. And it creates almost like a chamfered effect when I did that, but that's kind of interesting. You could use the set flow add-on as well to add a loop cut down the middle. And then, well, you add a loop cut and then set flow. If it doesn't work, go to object mode, select it again, go back to edit. That's a free add-on. It might it might make it look nicer, it might not. You'll have to play with it and see what you get, what kind of results you get. Yeah, so that's a possibility maybe. I don't think those help it actually. I think they made it worse a little bit. Hit it. So the machine tools add on by the way you can rotate edges very quickly with shortcut so uh, control two I think. Not by default I think it's control two. I might have modified that a little bit, but it's a smart edge feature. So I'd probably go with something like that. Unless you need it really, really sharp. In that case you'd probably do a smaller chamfer, I imagine work better right let's try it one more time small chamfer make it really small and then 
if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And that'll be the end of the video. But it's a really small chamfer. Split that this way this time. Um, subdivide it. Turn it off in edit mode. Let's just do some loop cuts. Two in each section. How it looks. Double this edge too. Shade smooth. We'll divide a few times. Pretty interesting. Uh, I think it this one might benefit the most, but it's a really small section there. Ooh, look at that messy. I'll do that. Yeah, so crunching it on this one. That's probably going to be the sharpest and best result you can get. Now, at the end of the day, just a reminder, subdivision is technically one of the least accurate forms of 3D modeling, but it tends to generate like the nice, nicest, well, cleanest looking results, smoothest look, uh, mesh with the least amount of geometry, so lower file sizes, generally speaking. But overall, you practice working shapes, and uh, I'm going to try spinning that. Yeah, it kind of does. Practice working these shapes when you run into issues. There's some ways you can kind of do it. Just playing around with chamfers, bevels, impulse, equals, triangles, and yons. Whatever the case. Get them to all kind of start to behave maybe the way you want them to. And in this case here, of course, um, I use an off number of segments. So I don't know if this is going to be everybody's go to method here. But certainly keep working it. See what we can end up with here. Last. And Probably should balance this. I feel like I should go back a little bit, maybe. So that might not be everybody's cup of tea either, right there. But if you ever have this triangle, like try to stretch apart, uh, add those loop cuts so that it doesn't do that, basically. But overall, interesting uh, setup here. I think I think that's about as tight as you can get that corner maybe but might be other methods perhaps less I guess we'll try one more to see what happens I'm gonna take the whole mesh and I'm gonna crease it so we're gonna use a um a mean crease and set it to one subdivide it All right and you can see here even with subdivision creasing can do some Pretty cool stuff sometimes. Now, of course, this is going to be a pole here still. So, but it does give you a chance to see, like, an increase of one can do some stuff here. Uh, the moment it goes down a little bit lower, you see like, these different results here. That's kind of fun. Uh, but set it to one. We'll subdivide it to something like this, maybe. And this is quite dense, to be honest, but we can apply it. And uh, when we subdivide this, get rid of the crease. Uh, you'll see basically we end up back back where we started. So about that. I'd have to play with the creases more to figure out if that, there's a better way of using them for the shape. But anyways, so yeah, if you know the best solution to this and you've already gone through this hassle, let me know because I, I still feel like there could be a better one, but I'm I'm not thinking of it. Uh, nonetheless, hopefully you can explore your shapes and uh, your problems as you're modeling and as you play around with different ideas and come up with your solutions. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and check you out the next one. All right, take care.